Hi, I'm Peter, and this is my tiny home in Euclid, VC. So I've been living here for about three months now. First of all, this is the outside. Um, we've built this like uh, kind of canopy area because it basically doubles the space of the tiny home, which is roughly about seven by 13 feet. And obviously here, it never really snows in this kind of climate. So we get to take advantage of the rain and you can kind of watch the forest and get taken the scenery from a distance uh, without getting wet. Here I've got my seating area. Um, generally I have uh, my meals here. I can hear, sit here and read a book, play music, um, have friends over. Uh, and I even have some canopy lights that I turn on in the evening. Uh, it's very serene and peaceful. And I've got my storage to your right or to my left. Here just storage area for basic stuff. Um, all the things that I guess I can't really part with um, that still have a place in my life down here. I've got my surfboard rack because uh, living close to Fino, uh, I have a lot of access to waves um, and you got to be ready. So I've got this rack here against this fence. Um, so I've got this like wave stormer here that I've got for friends when they come and visit. It's a very good beginner board uh, that I kind of learned to surf on. So it's good to have one of those for any time my friends and family come to visit. Otherwise, this is the outside space there. Um, it's on a trailer, uh, which is convenient. So if it ever had to move location, uh, that can happen pretty easily. Um, and other than that, I'm surrounded by nature. Um, yeah, trees in the back, trees everywhere. Yeah, extra storage if I ever needed to hang things on here. And eventually I think what I'm gonna do uh, is probably install some type of outdoor shower probably in this corner here. So then uh, I can hose down wetsuits and you know, on a nice summer day, you can have an outside shower. Some of the benefits from this type of lifestyle, I think is the fact that again, you're constantly like, if something comes up and I'm like, oh, I should buy that. But then I think, well, wait a second, is that actually gonna work within my space? Because you know, when you have a big house, it's very easy to fill that house with things that maybe you don't necessarily need, but you want. Whereas with tiny house living, I feel like you're definitely weighing things more in your mind. Like, okay, I could get that thing, but where, where the hell is it gonna go? So it's kind of nice. It always keeps you in check with that kind of stuff. So I think it's like a bit of a consumer control, if you will. The financial benefits to having a tiny home are definitely a lot more than say that of a normal home. For me being in you know my early thirties now, so I've been thinking about uh, buying a home for a while, but obviously as the market's kind of increased, it's definitely pushed people like myself, first time home buyer out of the market right now. Uh, and it's very tough because you want to have your own space, but you don't actually want to pay rent. You know, you don't want to, pay rent on a spot that really you don't have a lot of control over. A tiny home is kind of a happy medium in that situation where you own something that's yours that you can do whatever you want to. You're not becoming like house poor necessarily. You know, something like this, you know, you're not getting the luxuries of a condo where it's in the city, but if you love nature and you want to have your own space, it's definitely affordable. And this one's on a trailer. So like if I really needed to up and move somewhere, if I ever did buy land or if I wanted to eventually build that dream home, I could park this somewhere, live in it while I work on my project. So this is the inside of my tiny home. Uh, this is where I spend a uh, decent amount of my time, you know, when I'm not outside uh, surfing or just exploring a lot of the things that uh, Euclid and Tofino have to offer. Um, this here is the main space. So this would be acting as my living room. You know, sometimes I dine in here. Sometimes I watch movies, I play music. Um, it has my closet um, where I keep all of my clothes uh, and the kitchen just off here. So, you know, I guess I can start with this vanity, if you will. Um, Kind of nice uh it's raised off the ground here so there's a little bit of foot storage in here so you know got a scale uh you know you can slide shoes underneath here there's anything it's one of those things where like you don't really realize when you go right to the ground sometimes you really cut off i don't know the ability to tuck things away so it's a really nice little tucker uh yeah and then i've got some nice deep shelves here uh so in here i keep things like i record music so keep that pretty close by and then toiletries and you know there's big drawers so really like a lot of space for for anything really another little spot to kind of tuck things up here so i keep like a music stand there for when i play gigs in town and then i need to bring my guitar places um yeah books like i said got the makeshift i don't have any doors for my uh, closet so i thought a flag would be uh would be fitting but yeah got a couple sides here uh, oh, just threw my clothes in there didn't really fold them up but yeah, so I got stuff there. I got these little baskets here that slide out for things like underwear and socks and uh, 
because there's not a lot of storage, I really do just have to kind of like fold t-shirts. In tiny living, you don't really get a chance to like have that much laundry build up. So there are definitely clothes in the bottom of those piles that I probably don't probably don't even need to be honest because I end up doing laundry uh, before it gets to that point. I live in a tiny home because I just feel, especially in today's market, people are definitely trying to get houses that they don't necessarily need. There's a lot of people that are getting, I don't know, if you don't have a family and you don't have a partner, it's kind of nice to challenge yourself and live, like see what you can get away with like in terms of space. Some people need a lot of space and it's very interesting to challenge yourself to see what you can get away with in life. Like, you know, I've moved around a lot and I've had a lot of different living situations. So I've always been shedding things as I go. Um, you know, I've lived in my car for a little while, um, but I've also lived in a really nice apartment in Toronto where I had too many things. So it's kind of like a happy medium to kind of not live out of my car, but also not have a giant place either. So I, I moved out here from Ontario two and a half years ago. Uh, so I had already sold my place, put everything into a tent trailer, into my car, and pretty much took my life out west. And I didn't really have much of a game plan besides my tent trailer. So I'd already kind of done the downsizing before I moved into a tiny home. I was kind of living in my vehicle. But I, what I ended up doing for a long time is I had my tent trailer, my, my SUV that towed it. Uh, and then I actually bought a small storage unit, which was super beneficial. I had a 24 hour access one. So I had a lot of my my toys and stuff there. So my snowboard would go in there, my surfboards, um, things that I didn't need on a regular basis, but I just couldn't afford to kind of have it in my living space because I didn't use it all the time. So that was something that for me was a really big, pretty clutch to have in that kind of situation because I could go back and if I knew I had a snowboard trip coming up, I would kind of like reconvene my vehicle. So I'd get rid of all my summer stuff from like say surfing in Tofino. I would drop it all off and exchange it for all my winter gear, snowboard, my helmet, all my snow pants, all my snow gear. So that was a pretty big transition. So I think that helped me in terms of moving to a, a tiny home because I had already gotten rid of a lot of the clunk that would have followed me otherwise. All right, so uh, this is the kitchen. Um, I actually spent a lot of time in here because now that I live here, um, I didn't always, I, was, I lived like in, a, in my SUV for a long time in a tent trailer where I didn't have the uh, luxury of a kitchen. So now that I do, I try to cook as many meals as I can. And this is all the kitchen that I really need. Uh, it's like one person living in a tiny home. Certain things to note here, there's just a lot of storage. Um, you know, so up here we've got just all like the, knick not knickknacks, but you know, like cutting boards, you got your spatulas, extra knives. These are, this is actually one knife in particular that my younger brother got me when I moved in. It was like a housewarming gift. Very, definitely like the best knife I've ever owned. And he definitely told me not to cut my finger off when I got it. And down here I've got my limited amount of dishes. Um, because obviously in a tiny home you don't really need eight of anything so I have three basically that's like the magic number for me because it's like you know if I have a guest I don't really think I would have much more than three people here at a time just because of the seating situation um, and then I've got my pots and different different pans and stuff down there one of the things that came in this place because I actually did not build this from scratch uh, I kind of uh, I caretake after the property so I actually look after it um, this is something that was put in here that I probably myself wouldn't normally use that often, but some people use them and it's like a microwave oven thing. I'm not really actually sure, to be honest. Um, yeah, I pretty much only use it for popcorn, for movie nights, um, but it's great. Apparently it's got a lot of settings for, I guess you can reheat certain things on it. Before I moved here, I ended up buying a toaster oven, uh, which I actually use a lot. One of these double burners is great, um, you know, cause I don't, you know, can boil one, can fry things on another, little like spice rack that I got from Value Village. Up here I've got like some extra little pantry areas so I keep my olive oil up there, my couscous, quinoa, like little snacks. And then these things too, um, just extra drawers for all like my chips, cereal, granola bars, you know, just everything to keep the motor going. The challenges to living in a tiny house is you kind of miss out on some of those luxuries of say having like a whole bunch of people over, you know, if you want to host, you know, a game night or a movie night with you know more than maybe like a partner you know it's definitely not the ideal space to have a whole bunch of guests over but it's fine because it gets you it forces you to go out to parks forces you to go meet out at a restaurant uh you know or you can just you know meet out on a trail and then come back and that's why i design places like this this deck so then you kind of have that spot that you can kind of go back to and sit down and have a coffee have a beer but yeah that's definitely the challenge is not being able to host i couldn't invite like six people over here because like, I don't know where they would stay, to be honest. On this side here, I'm a bit of a handyman. Uh, that's like kind of my job. I do maintenance and other things. So it was really important for me to have a spot for my tools that wasn't like next to my food. So food's over there. All my tools and stuff are here. Um, yeah, and that's what I use. And the breaker panel is there and it's not cluttered or anything like that. So easy access if anything were to go out, uh, which can happen from, you know, 
fallen tree or something or even just like overloading things in the tiny home it's just very important they have that and down here this is kind of interesting here it's an instant uh water heater which is uh very interesting rather than having like a water like a I don't know, hot water tank you can use this and pretty much instantly you get hot water which is pretty cool um the only thing you got to make sure is the propane is always you know if you run out of propane you're going to run out of the the flame that's going to ignite that's going to heat the system so what i do is I actually have a splitter so i have two propane tanks so if one runs out i can kind of fill it like you know it's not like i'll just go out instantly it'll go to the next propane tank and i can fill it up so i'm always you know for the most part um always taken care of because again you think of like a tiny home you think you know a tiny fridge and everything like that which i've had a tiny fridge before but this one here it's just got so much space for all my food and then below it's like a pretty cool freezer i've never seen freezers like this before um and it's got different compartments here so you know i've got like my ice and my pizza crusts up there Separate thing that I have for like my frozen vegetables, my frozen berries, keep my meat separately. Um, and then down here, what I end up doing with a lot of my grease because of the, just the septic system here, um, you know, you gotta be really careful. It goes down that drain. So a lot of the time I just use my old ice cream containers and I fill them with grease and things from like my, my pans or anything like that before it goes to the drain. So just gotta make sure cause it can kind of look like the ice cream. So like this one here is a chocolate caramel. I mean, it's not very chocolatey, but it looks caramelly. So, you know, just be aware if you come over, like that may not be ice cream. This is the sink. Um, yeah, it's a pretty big sink that for a long time I was doing dishes. I've always like had apartments that didn't have dishwashers. So I was always doing dishes by hands. And it's kind of a habit that I just continue to do even when I have a dishwasher, which in this home I actually do. It's right here. Uh, it's a really tiny one. Um, and I actually just used it for the first time like two weeks ago. Cause I had some friends over and it was more dishes than just me. And I was like, ah, oh, I should try the, this thing out. So here's where I keep my garbage, my recycling. It's all pretty compact. Um, you know, I have a fire pit too. So I'll burn a lot of like the cardboard sometimes um, when it's dry. So the sink here, it's again, based on the, uh, the water system there. Um, it's got one of these little removable, no removable nozzles, which is nice. You can kind of get in here, especially I find it's good for cleaning. Uh, you know, even like, cause the sink's kind of big. Um, so it's just good to kind of do a final clean of the sink before I kind of like walk away. I've got here, just a basic little coffee maker that I had when I was in university that I just, for some reason, won't get rid of. I was offered a bigger coffee pot, but it's just me here. You know what I mean? And if I make a full pot of coffee, I will drink that entire pot of coffee. This is like a little family memorial section. You know, when I'm doing my dishes and stuff, I got my brother who's a chef. Like I said earlier, he got me a knife. so. He lives out in Canmore, so he, uh, you know, I feel like he belongs in the kitchen. Uh, you know, there's my dad who's in the States, uh, my stepdad, and my mother who both passed away fairly recently. Um, you know, they're just there just to kind of keep an eye on me, I guess, so, which is pretty cool. Living in a tiny house, I've just realized how much, how little I actually need to survive. You know, there's a lot of things now that, you know, because I'm still in the market to buy a house, maybe. Uh, it's not something that necessarily has gone away completely, but I've definitely kind of turn my back on that a little bit, but it's definitely caused me to think of things so that when I do finally get around to buying a house, it's like, well, do I need that? Or is, is a tiny home enough? And when you see the price comparison of a tiny home, that's, you know, around 80 or hundred grand compared to, I mean, most houses, especially around here, minimally 350,000, maybe more. Uh, and those are houses that aren't, you know, that need a lot of work. It just makes you really realize like, okay, what ticks the boxes here? So if you're thinking about getting into tiny house living, something that I ended up doing, uh, I do quite a bit of road trips and I would go through the States and camp parts of Canada, um, especially a couple of years ago. And what I ended up doing is I used websites like Airbnb where I could stay at unique places. So a lot of the times you can actually look for things like tiny homes. So I would say maybe if you can try to stay in a tiny home for like a week or a you know, month, test yourself because you know, obviously once you commit to something like this, especially if you own it, it's uh, it could be hard to get out of right. You know, you just want, don't want to get yourself into something that you're not prepared for. So I would say if you can try to rent something, try, you know, if you know a friend that's got one or if you've got like a short term rental in your area or somewhere cool, try it out, see how it goes uh, and just picture your life there, you know, and don't stay there for just two nights, maybe stay there for at least a week just so you can kind of get used to how the kitchen functions, how the bathroom works, how if you have a partner, how the two of you can work a dynamic uh, within that space together. Can't forget the docking station here. So I had like an old school iPod that I hadn't been using in a while and I came across it and I was like, oh, I could use it for something and I ended up going to a Valley Village because I was like, I need to charge it, but I didn't have any cables. So I'm like, what if I get a docking station because that charges them at the same time? So now this is like my morning alarm clock 
slash old school iPod player. So, you know, I just put it on shuffle and that's how I wake up at like five in the morning. We got my guitar mounted there, which is pretty cool. I'm probably gonna put another guitar on the other side. Got a little bit of extra storage up here, these cubbies that open up and you know, just trying to find things to put in here. A lot of them like aren't super easy. On this wall here, I've got a giant TV that <laughs> is probably too big for this space generally, but it's, uh, you know, it's pretty much a gift. And I'm, you know, if someone gives you a 51 inch TV, you don't just like throw it away. And on the way to the bathroom, there's like a little space heater, which it's pretty awesome. A little slim guy that you can set the temperature right now. It's at 21, which honestly is a little warm. So in here we've got, it's a washer dryer combo, um, which is pretty good. Like I, I really like LG being the, a maintenance guy. They're just really easy to work on. Um, if anything goes down on them, they're pretty easy to repair. And here's this toilet. Um, Kind of like an RV style, like there is, it is water fed. Uh, it's not like a waterless system, but it's a tankless system. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. You can get away with, uh, you know, anything natural in toilet paper, um, but nothing else beyond that because there is a lift station here that kind of grinds everything up and shoots it out to a septic field. So you just gotta be careful. Uh, there have been times where I think earlier on there was a screw for some reason that made its way in there lodged into the motor uh, and that kind of caused a bit of a backup and got pretty stinky. So definitely don't want that. Here's got extra storage for toilet trees and extra toilet paper and things like that, which is nice. Um, here's a little like, I guess, drying rack. I mean, you know, if you need to hang things or whatever, which is pretty nice. Um, I mean, you can't put too much weight on it, so you gotta be careful. And then here's the shower uh, and a bathtub. It's a little dirty um, because I actually, Obviously I shower, but there's also, uh, it's a great spot to, for me to hang my wetsuits to get dry uh, at night. So, cause the heater's right there. The only thing that the, here, the water pressure isn't like the absolute greatest. So if you're going to get a shower head or something, like, at least for this space, definitely try to get one that's like, uh, they have one's called EcoBoost that kind of create more pressure, uh, especially when you're not dealing with a whole lot of water pressure to begin with. So the door here, um, sliding door. Um, I'm just here by myself, so like to be honest, I don't close it when I go to the bathroom. But if I have guests, you know, you can kind of give them a quick slide. I think someone that benefits from this type of lifestyle is someone that is okay with uh, being alone sometimes, you know, because a lot of the time, like I said, I'm in the woods, you know, I can't have guests over all the time. So there are times where you have to, you're just alone in your space. And if you're someone like me, uh, sometimes this is like the place to escape. You know, I write music and I play music, so I get to play music in my tiny home. I can cook meals by myself. I can sleep in if I want to. I can go surfing and then come back here. And it's my little, like, just my getaway. So I would say if that's the type of person that you are, then this might be something that you'd be interested in. And if you're, if you're someone that is just like, you feel weighed down by items, which I've felt before in the past, I definitely think a tiny home is a step in the right direction to kind of shed some of that just unnecessary purchases that people get weighed down with because items you know items are some are one thing but experiences are another so if you're someone that goes through life looking for more experiences than like material things and i think it's uh might be for you so this unit here it's got the obviously the two lofts um and the access for here are these two ladders which they fold up which is pretty nice so that just kind of clips on there and they're not very heavy so it doesn't really need a whole lot obviously i wouldn't hang on it but you know, it is on like a, an actual joist and stuff too. So there is a lot of support there. So this is uh, my loft. As you can see, the ceiling is extremely low. Uh, it's one of the things that could be like, um, like if I could change one thing, it'd probably be to add another two or three feet here. Cause um, to be honest, early on, I've definitely woken up in the middle of the night and hit my head like on the ceiling. Yeah, and I've got some lights back here. You know, if you need to do some reading, um, light up the space. I mean, honestly, like I do a little bit of reading up here, but for the most part, I just come up here to sleep. So a lot of the time those lights are just on for me to get in here. And then once I'm in bed, I kind of turn it off. Got a couple of plugs there too, to charge my phone, uh, which is good. So there's the skylight here, which is pretty nice. Um, and we've got like the clear plexi on the actual roof itself, which is nice. So you can still, you know, can't see perfectly through it, but it's a lot better than just it being like a solid color or something. And it's an extra protection. So it's not landing, you know, if it's raining hard, which it does here on the West coast, um, that could be something that could wake you up or whatever. Um, so there's a little bit of that buffer. So you still hear it, but it's not directly above your head, which is, um, something to think about, especially if you live in the, like a very wet climate. And then that side, uh, it's basically a mirror image of the side that you just saw. It's, it's got also got a bed too. Um, some people use it as like a storage loft. For me, it's kind of like a, 
guest bedroom slash storage. So I've got a couple of little things up there, like some suitcases and things that, you know, just I didn't really have a spot for it, like down here. So I keep it up there. But again, for the most part, I keep the bed open. So then if I have guests stay over, uh, they've got a spot as well. I would definitely say life is about living, you know, and you don't know how long you have on this earth. So you got to make the most of it. You know, something like a nice job is great and, you know, money, sure, it can get you certain things, but what it can't get you is those experiences because in the end, it's you that has to ultimately decide to go on that experience. You know what I mean? Like you can pay, you can swipe your card, you can pay something, but you actually have to physically go and do something. And I think that that's what life's all about is just getting out and doing something, you know, whether, uh, whether it's going and surfing some waves, going to hike mountains, whatever your passion is, you just gotta get up and go for it because no one else is gonna make you do those things. So find out what you love and just follow. You know, even if things go bad, like, you know, even when I have a bad day here, it's not that bad. You know, I'm by the ocean, I'm in nature. I used to live in a city and, you know, paid way too much for an apartment, made money, had a lot of materialistic things, but in the end, like, I was always just striving for, like, a day off. But here it's like, even my work days don't feel that bad. So if you want to find me, uh, I use my Instagram quite a bit and it's Pete underscore Chad. You know, at one point my tent trailer was up there. So I had my renovations on that, uh, my moving process to get here, some construction things that I do. Um, you can find all that on there. I have a band, the Advancing Low Lives. So at Advancing Low Lives, you can find that on Instagram. Um, we're also on Facebook, on Spotify. We're like a punk rock band based out of Ontario. Uh, I'm here on the West Coast um, and we kind of took some time off during COVID uh, for shows, but I'm, you know, I'm hoping that now that things are starting to go back to normal, I'm hoping we get back and play music. Um, but here in Euclulet, I actually play, uh, there's like open mics around town. So there's Yuki Dogs down the street uh, that has open mic uh, every Wednesday. So a lot of the time you can find me there playing some of my tunes. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.